Hey guys, it's Mrs. Hawk. I just wanted to review what your reading was last week. Uh, this document is available for you to look on Canvas anytime you want to look at it, but um, uh, it does cover just book one. And then as you guys continue to read through the book, I will start posting more things for book two and then book three. So uh, I hope things are going well for you. Hope you're doing well, uh, staying healthy and, and busy and staying up to date with all your work, not just in my class, but other classes. So <clears throat> hopeful that May 4th comes and, and we can see each other again. So um, so let's talk about uh, book one, at least chapters one to two, one to three. Um, so, uh, it's April 4th, Winston returns home from Victory Mansions, which I understand that Victory Mansions is not anything that is, is exciting. It's a very much a rundown place, but that's kind of that double think, that double speak, that you say a contradictory thought <clears throat> about something. Um, and uh, he tries to hide this diary that he purchased at the black market from the telescreens. The telescreens are everywhere in uh, the community, um, even inside their apartments. So the the government is watching every little thing that they have. Um, and uh, they're also <clears throat> throwing out um, propaganda on that. So the telescreens are, not only can they see in the apartments, but they can also uh, uh, provide propaganda and uh, push out information that the government wants their community to see. So while he writes, <clears throat> while he's writing, he's in his apartment and this is in a small little niche where the telescreen can't see him. And while he's writing, Winston stops to think about this woman that he saw at work from the inner party during this two minutes of hate. Um, and it's basically this daily rant against Goldstein. Now Goldstein is, um, <clears throat> he is basically part of the underground uh, rebellion. Um, and uh, so he kind of makes eye contact with her. He makes eye contact with uh, a man by the name of O'Brien, who he thinks um, he thinks is uh, um, part of this O'Brien this rebellion, but he's not 100% sure. So as he's in there, again, the telescreens can't see what he's doing. And uh, he keeps writing down with Big Brother, down with Big Brother in his diary. So that's chapter one. So then chapter two, um, this is kind of an interesting chapter. Um, Winston helps this neighbor that's across the uh, way in his apartment, which is kind of like the projects, I would say. Um, and her name is Mrs. Parsons. And um, he is kind of taken back by some of the violent video games that his children are, that Mrs. O'Brien's children are playing. Um, and they're kind of yelling and, and screaming at the telescreen. So uh, back in the apartment, Big Brother's slogans kind of flash onto the screen. Again, they can push these things out. And these are all paradoxes. They're contradictory statements. So if you look at the statements as a whole, notice that they contradict each other. So war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. So these all contradict each other. So you can't have peace with war. You can't have freedom with slavery. You can't have strength if everybody is ignorant. So that's kind of part of the party's slogan that they want to kind of throw it out. Now, the proles who are roughly, you know, 85% of the population, uh, the majority of the population here, uh, they blindly believe these. And that's the strength in the party. They want the mass majority of people to really understand that. So as Winston's writing in his diary, he's realizing that everything that he's writing down in his diary um, could possibly bring his own death. So <clears throat> then in chapter three, Winston dreams of his mother who kind of disappears when he's about 10 or 11 years old. Um, and as this is kind of an interesting and funny scene, as he's performing these obligatory daily exercises, um, the instructor actually like yells at Winston on the screen that he's not touching his toes um, and doing the exercises correctly. So um, he also is recalling that um, Oceana, who, which is about London, um, is always at war with East Asia or your Asia. And uh, it's kind of interesting that the enemy kind of changes multiple times throughout the text. Um, so, and which is part of what Winston's job is. Winston's job is to 
change the text based on what the job or what the the uh, uh, big brother wants him to do, what the um, inner party wants him to do. So, all right, that's chapters one to three. So just keep up with the assignments. There'll be more posted tomorrow morning on Tuesday, uh, but uh, good luck and let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'll talk to you guys soon, okay? Thank <laughs> you.